للسلام صوتك صوتك أجراس الكنايس آه أصوات الأدان بتنادي 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 السلام أجراس الكنايس آه أصوات الأدان بتنادي 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 السلام Selective truth. Values for sale? In these challenging times, do we really know what's going on? How are we influenced by the media, politics, and the economy? Join us to discuss media, freedom, values. At the Deutsche Welle Global Media Forum, the place made for minds. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our opening ceremony. Please welcome now our host, Jana Paragas. A warm welcome to this Global Media Forum this year. I'm very happy that you're all there, and I want to start with one of the most important organizational things, and that's the translation. We will have four wonderful men and women up there translating for us, so if you need a headset, you can get it at the entrance, but please return it later. And at Channel 1, you can uh, read a translation in English. Channel 2 will be French, 3 will be Arabic, and 4 will be German. And please switch off your cell phones. And cell phones is actually a good keyword because I bet I know what most of you did this morning immediately after waking up, and that ch is checking your smartphone. Even in the, was it, 40 seconds I was just speaking, worldwide tens of thousands of tweets and articles have been posted and videos uploaded. It's the freedom of expression, a freedom that is limited in many countries, from Azerbaijan to Zimbabwe. But even if you have access to this information on the web, it's just sheer overwhelming the amount of blog entries and videos and articles and posts that you can find online each day. So the big crucial question is, how do we find our way through this labyrinth of information? What do we read? Which sources do we trust? For example, when it comes to the war in Syria and what values are important to us? So some of those questions are answered for us by big companies like Google and Facebook because they use algorithms. And then also we are influenced by what our friends are posting on social networking sites. I mean, if you just look at your Facebook site, at your profile there, your friends, are they from your age group? Do they have decent jobs and live in cities, big cities? Probably yes. That also means that the posts you read, the articles that are posted on your website, will influence the opinion you have on certain topics, like, for example, the European refugee crisis. So, what does, does this whole development mean for the media? How can we as journalists stand our ground amidst this information overload? How do we ensure independent reporting? And how can we win back trust that has been lost? We want to talk about this here at the Global Media Forum, talking about media, about val values, and about freedom. And first of all, I want to ask Mr. Peter Limburg to come on stage. He's the Director General for Deutsche Welle. And I know that there's one crucial question on his mind, and that is, what do I do with this digital age? 
how do I think about this changing relationship between the audience and media? Welcome, Mr. Limbaugh. <laughs> Well, Jana, thank you very much. Uh, there are also other questions. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, how do I apology for, apologize for this weather? Again, we're not so lucky this time, but we will have fun, I'm sure. And uh, if there's bad weather, we can al also watch football. It's all provided, and uh, it started well for Germany. Hope for you too, everybody. So welcome, ministers. State secretaries, delegates, members of the DW board, partners, ladies and gentlemen. This year's Global Media Forum stands for an open discussion about media, freedom and values. All of us are working for an advancement of open societies and the free exchange of information. But still limitations on political action on human rights and the freedom of speech continue to threaten the values we expect to be universal. And in today's digital age, it has become easier to distribute disinformation and to manipulate. Therefore, we need to rethink the way in which we perceive, demonstrate and spread our values. Delivering our journalistic content to our audiences is calling for a new approach. We at Deutsche Welle have set a determined course towards digitalization. A vast number of our users is already being reached via mobile devices and social media. Of course, we will continue to broadcast linear television, produce radio programs, and make our content available in 30 languages on our websites. But the most efficient way of contributing to the global debate is to enable as many of our users as possible to join indirectly with solid knowledge of the facts through their preferred social media channels. Only when people are able to communicate freely, there will be change. The, the possibility to share ideas and values with others and the chance to inspire those who are still under the control of dictatorial regimes. DW has proven relations with more than 4,000 distribution partners around the world who are helping us to distribute our content and making it possible for us to reach out to ever more people. Our distribution partners will be playing a vital part in the new digital strategy of Deutsche Welle. Mobile access of information is a growing factor in many of DW's target markets. We want to grasp this opportunity and make sure that our content is available to our users on all distribution channels. The workflow within DW are currently undergoing the transition from a multimedia broadcaster to a true digital global information provider. A new element of this important process are co-productions. DW has identified members of our partner network who not only share the same values we stand for, they also have outstanding and are outstanding sources for journalistic content in their regions. This is a first in international broadcasting and an important step in recognizing the value of the contribution of regional partners. Together, we have begun co-producing content which is being broadcasted on all channels of both DW and her partners. We truly appreciate the local experience and perspective which our regional partners contribute and we are thankful for their insight which no international broadcasters could provide to its users without them. We want freedom of speech to be a universal right. We expect journalists to be able to be critical without having to fear retribution. Sadly, this is being impaired in more and more countries. The drastic interference with freedom of the press in Turkey is the most recent example. Critical media are facing harassment by henchmen of President Erdogan's governing party. Journalists are being dragged into court on constructed charges of supporting terrorism. To see what has become 
of this president is a sad thing to see for a friend of Turkey. Not his critics are damaging the reputation of Turkey, but he himself does. And also in Europe, in the heart of the European Union, freedom of the press cannot be taken for granted. National conservative governments in Hungary and Poland are mounting pressure against journalists who are not agreeable to their policies. This is aimed especially against public service broadcasting. Each country is different, of course. We have to listen to the arguments of those now in charge and consider them. And we should avoid blanket judgments. But nothing, and I stress, nothing justifies a limitation of the freedom of expression to be rooted within a democratic constitution. Even here in Germany, the enemies of the freedom of the press are at work. Right-wing populists of all shapes label journalists as lying press. They cannot tolerate diversity because for them, the truth equals only their own opinion. The freedom of the press can also be undermined by journalists themselves. If they don't research with due diligence, if they copy without checking the facts, or if they scandalize every harmless occurrence, because thus they provide arguments to their enemies. Ladies and gentlemen, let us be fully aware of one thing. The end of freedom of expression is also the beginning of the end of democracy. There are simply no more excuses. When this point is reached, each and every one of us is called upon to stand up and demand the freedom of expression loud and clear. And I know that a lot of people in this room who are already doing this in their home countries, in their regions, and I know that standing here in Germany, it's much easier to say these words, but doing it actually in countries where the freedom of press is so much in danger is really a very, 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 good and very helpful thing for freedom of democracy. So I thank you all who are fighting in your regions for freedom of expression. Thank you. <laughs> and another thing we have, we need to realize in our globalized world, with all its problems, nationalism is no solution. International cooperation, open-mindedness, and the exchange of knowledge make us progress. This is precisely what we at Deutsche Welle stand up for. This is our mission. Let me close by inviting you to make the Global Media Forum a place where inspiring debates shall lead to solutions and a better understanding of the challenges ahead. So welcome again to Global Media Forum, and thank you all for your valuable contribution to a new outlook for a better tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Limburg. And now we have a very special video message for you from the federal president of Germany, Joachim Gauck, the most powerful voice of freedom in Germany. Meine Damen und Herren, sehr herzlich grüße ich Sie alle die Sie zum Deutsche Welle Global Media Forum in Bonn versammelt sind. Ich freue mich darüber, dass Sie aus über 100 Nationen zu uns nach Deutschland gekommen sind, um sich zu begegnen, sich zu informieren und sich miteinander auszutauschen. Hier im ehemaligen Plenarsaal des Deutschen Bundestages, einem Gebäude, dem der Architekt die Atmosphäre von Offenheit und Transparenz gegeben hat, kommen viele unterschiedliche Menschen zu diesem Forum zusammen. Wie einst die Abgeordneten des demokratischen Parlaments sind Sie, liebe Teilnehmer und Gäste, es gewohnt, sich eine eigene Meinung zu bilden und diese auch unerschrocken zu vertreten. So wird es sicher zu vielen spannenden Diskussionen und sachlichen Auseinandersetzungen kommen. Das Thema Medien, Freiheit, Werte lädt ja zu intensiven Streitgesprächen geradezu ein. Gerade in Zeiten beständig wachsender Informationsmengen im Netz 
brauchen wir im weltweiten Zusammenleben Debatten um Werte und Orientierung, die unser politisches Denken, Reden und Handeln bestimmen. Eine solche inspirierende Debattenkultur entspricht ganz und gar dem Geist der deutschen Welle. Nie gab es so viele Möglichkeiten zur Information wie heute. Wir sehen aber auch, dass damit zugleich die Möglichkeiten zur Manipulation und zur Desinformation wachsen und diese von vielen auch skrupellos ausgenutzt werden. Umso mehr kommt es darauf an, dass man bewährten Medien, die zum Markenzeichen verlässlichen Journalismus geworden sind, auch weiterhin vertrauen kann. Und dass diese weiterhin unbestechlich, tatsachenorientiert und seriös berichten. Die Deutsche Welle, die Gastgeberin dieser großen internationalen Konferenz, ist inmitten all der gegenwärtigen Krisen und Konflikte ein solches glaubwürdiges Medium geblieben, das weltweit großes Vertrauen genießt. Dafür danke ich allen Ihren Mitarbeiterinnen und Mitarbeitern und wünsche Ihnen auch weiterhin für Ihre Arbeit alles Gute. Allen Teilnehmern am Global Media Forum wünsche ich spannende und lehrreiche Tage voller guter Begegnungen. On a daily basis, the Federal Foreign Office in Germany promotes democracy and freedom of the press worldwide. And it's my pleasure to ask Michael Roth for Europe from the Federal Foreign Office to come on stage now. Good morning, everybody, distinguished guests from all over the world, Minister Herr Schmenze, my distinguished colleague from the European Parliament, Mr. Lambsdorff, our Director General, and many other friends. I'm extremely delighted to be here. This is a premiere for me because I have the privilege to participate in the opening ceremony of the ninth Global Media Forum. But I'm very excited because exactly 17 years ago, I delivered my last speech in the German Bundestag in this plenary chamber. This was uh, in 1999, in June, and um, exactly two days later, the German Bundestag moved from the city of Bonn to the city of Berlin. And I'm very happy about this decision. <laughs> Dear guests, I'm sure. Dear guests, I'm afraid that we are on the brink of a new era of fear and illiberalism and new authoritarian systems. The great historian Fritz Stern issued this warning a few weeks before he died in May 2016. But his words live on. Indeed, liberal democracy seems to be on the defensive in too many places. The calls for the strong men are widespread. I believe that the media has an important task to perform here, also and particularly in Europe. While we are facing a growing trend towards populist polarization, an unbiased, balanced, and fact-based approach to reporting is more urgently needed than ever before. Throughout the world, we are seeing a downwards trend in the conditions for freedom of expression. In more and more countries, the media and individual journalists are coming under pressure. The 2016 World Press Freedom Index by Reporters Without Borders shows the freedom of media is not, given, is not a given fact. Since 2013, the global indicator for freedom of the press has fallen by 14%. And this global trend doesn't stop at European borders. In fact, Europe's pioneering role in press freedom is eroding. In several EU countries, there is a trend towards restricting the independence of the media through stricter regulation. And our Director General already mentioned some bad examples. Even here in Germany, 
Violence and threats towards journalists have increased dramatically. Journalists as a whole are insulted as lying media. At most recently, the case of Jan Böhmermann attracted considerable attention, raising the question of the extent to which critical political satirists can be held criminally responsible. This shows that the freedom of the media is not only discussed in other parts of the world. This debate affects us all. The free media need to do justice to their role as the fourth estate. They have an important role to play in uncovering shortcomings and violations of fundamental democratic values. It's a well-known fact that journalists throughout the world often have to put themselves, their families, and their existence at risk to fulfill this role. Deutsche Welle has responded to this situation and launched the Freedom of Speech Award last year. It's presented to individuals and initiatives who have shown particular commitment in the area of human rights and freedom of opinion. Last year, the award went to the Saudi blogger Raif Badawi, who is still not able to be here at the Global Media Forum in person due to his imprisonment. Our thoughts are with him today. <laughs> this year, the award goes to Sedat Ergin, editor-in-chief of the Turkish daily newspaper Hurriyet. He is working actively to support independent journalism in Turkey in the face of extremely serious restrictions for media representatives. Mr. Egin, on behalf of my government, I sincerely congratulate you on your award, which will be presented to you following this opening ceremony. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, no political order can remain stable in the long term if it systematically violates the rights and freedom of its citizens. This understanding is a guiding principle of our human rights dialogue, which plays an important role in our foreign policy. And that's why we stand up for imprisoned or persecuted human rights defenders, journalists, and bloggers, whether in Saudi Arabia, Iran, Turkey, China, or Russia. We need to defend and strengthen the fundamental values on which our coexistence is based, freedom, democracy, the rule of law, and equality. We do this persistently, seldom visible on the open stage, but more often behind the scenes. Fighting for human rights is not about positive headlines or news coverage. The driving force for our human rights work is to provide concrete assistance to people in great trouble. The approach adopted by diplomacy therefore differs from the, human, the, from the way human rights organizations and the media themselves proceed. NGOs like Amnesty International or journalists are able to criticize human rights violations and restrictions of press freedom sometimes in a clearer and stronger words than ministers and diplomats. So we play different roles. We make use of different instruments. But what unites us is the aim to promote human rights worldwide. In many countries, journalism is an integral part of political debate. The role of social media as a platform for articulating political views and mobilizing support has become increasingly prominent. This is particularly true for the revolutions in the Middle East since 2010. What would the Arab Spring have been without Facebook or Twitter? Blogs and forums have changed political communication radically. Deutsche Welle has been acknowledging this development for over a decade with the annual awards, the BOPS, Best of Online Activism. These awards honor outstanding commitment to strengthening freedom of opinion and civil society on the internet. Ladies and gentlemen, 
German international media promotion largely focuses on supporting local partners and structures on the ground. The Federal Foreign Office takes a very flexible approach by deciding on media promotion projects on a year-by-year -year basis. Most of these projects focus on specific regions, which currently include North Africa, the Middle East, Sub-Saharan Africa, selected countries in Latin America and Asia, and Ukraine. Shabab Talk is one prominent example of how we can promote freedom of opinion in Arab countries. This socially critical, interactive talk show for young people, which is broadcast weekly on Deutsche Welle's Arabic TV channel, has been sponsored by the Federal Foreign Office since 2014. The popularity of the program, which has won numerous media prizes, shows how motivated young people in Arab countries are to shape debate on public policy. They don't shy away from discussing even, even sensitive and taboo projects. Shabab talk has been a source of heated controversy, for example, with its program on homosexuality and sex before marriage. Media reporting has the potential to strengthen the dialogue between societies and to unite them, but it can also divide them. That's why we have been supporting our partners in the Eastern Partnership countries and Russia since 2014 to help them create and increase diversity of information, opinion, and the media. Our aim is to enable the fourth estate to fulfill its role as a platform for information and discussion. To this end, the federal government is providing workshops and training programs for local journalists on topics such as conflict, sensitive reporting, and research skills. Ukraine is one important example. Since 2014, the Federal Foreign Office has been supporting the creation of a pluralistic media landscape in the country. Our focus here is on advising the government and public broadcasters and on further training for journalists. Specifically, we are supporting the process to transform Ukraine's state broadcasting into a public media corporation along Western lines. Besides, we produce the daily Ukrainian language news magazine Deutsche Welle Novini. Ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, the essence of freedom of the press is that people are able to express their opinions freely without fear or negative consequences. Freedom of opinion and unhindered access to information are the cornerstones of a functioning democracy, economic progress, and sustainable development. I wish the Global Media Forum every success and above all, interesting and constructive debates on the issues that concern you all, politics and the peaceful developments of our societies. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Roth. And uh, our next speaker is one of the most vocal politicians in the European Parliament when it comes to promoting democratic values. Please welcome Alexander Graf Lambsdorff, Vice President of the European Parliament. Thank you very much, Jana. Minister of State, Minister, dear Sadat Irgun, dear Peter Limburg, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to address you here at the Global Media Forum in the former German capital of Bonn. There's perhaps no better place to talk about media freedom and values than Bonn. Not only because it happens to be my hometown, but also because this is the city where the foundations for a free and democratic Germany were laid after the Second World War. And of course, it was a great mistake of the Bundestag to take that decision to move away from Bonn <laughs> and go to Berlin. Thank you for that warm applause. I will share that with my compatriots here in my hometown. Let me start by congratulating Peter Limburg and his team. 
Um, I have had a look at the program that you are all embarking on for the next few days, and I have to say the number of difficult topics and challenging questions is quite staggering. You do not shy away from controversy. Uh, you will tackle really tough issues. I've seen one that really struck me. The Carnegie Endowment is suggesting that you all talk about, I quote, the death of Europe's liberal secular consensus. Um, I am an optimist by nature, and I will come back to this. I think we're not quite there yet. But, of course, media freedom is under challenge. And it is under challenge in a number of places. Different nations have different values, different perceptions of what may and may not be said. And even in democracies, politicians sometimes are very upset with the media, with what is written about them, how they operate, and all these things. But as politicians, we can, of course, criticize the media, I believe. There are some in the media who believe politicians aren't allowed to criticize the media in their turn. I think we do have that right. But I think Albert Camus stated it best. He said, a free press can be good or bad, but most certainly, without freedom, it will never be anything but bad. So freedom of expression is a precondition for democratic rights, for free public discourse. In the next few minutes, allow me to give you a European perspective on this topic and elaborate shortly on three points. We have just heard that media freedom has declined again last year. Freedom House now says that only 31% of the countries around the globe are rated to have a free press. Francis Fukuyama's end of history did not materialize. The struggle for liberty continues. There are num a number of countries in our neighborhood and countries with whom the European Union has strong economic and political ties where freedom of the press is not a reality. But as an organization of democratic country and as a democracy in and of itself, the European Union, of course, wants to promote free media. It is a core aim of every democracy to support democratic activists around the world. We face two challenges in that field. We face a number, but I want to identify two. One, our public international broadcasters like Deutsche Welle, like the BBC World Service, uh, like France 24, like others, have had a great experience in building knowledge and doing this in a differentiated and very mature way. Now, however, our audiences are faced with a very similar approach foreign public broadcasting from authoritarian governments. How do we react to this? For the European Union, this is a very relevant question. We have public foreign broadcasting in the Russian language sphere, which is partly reporting, but partly propaganda. And we have Russian speakers inside the European Union. So how we, do we deal with this? And we've had lively debates about this in Brussels, I can tell you that. And some suggest that we should use counter-propaganda. We have decided against that. We have decided against this. What we are doing now inside the European Commission, there is a unit for strategic communications that monitors the news that comes into the European Union from outside, which spreads values that are not ours. But we do not counter it with propaganda, but we work true to ourselves with verifiable news, with critical news, with independent journalists who sometimes criticize us in the process of answering to their threat. That's the number one threat that I wanted to identify. There's a second threat. It is not inside the European Union, but it has to do with the freedom of the media as well, and that is the threat to free speech and free media from organized crime. There are a number of countries around the world where crime syndicates go after journalists and media representatives, threatening their families, their lives, their livelihoods, and it is even more difficult to answer that because here we do not interact with state actors, but on the contrary, take Mexico, for example, with completely unscrupulous criminals. Strong legal institutions are what are needed. And what is interesting, if you look at the statistics, a free press and strong legal institutions very often correlate. The independence of the judiciary under threat 
is very often correlated also to threats to the independence of the media. Ladies and gentlemen, I think there are a number of threats to the independence of the media outside the European Union, but I think we should not be sanctimonious and preach to the outside world and ignore what's going on inside the European Union. That's my second point. We encourage media freedom in accession countries, but sometimes we have a problem with our old members and our newer members inside the European Union concerning free journalism. Take, for example, Hungary. Hungary has pursued a policy that I would describe as illiberal towards the media. Take the issue of media concentration in some of our member states. Italy is a founding member of the European Union, but for a while had a prime minister who was also the owner of the largest media conglomerate. It's very hand handy for the prime minister, I have to say. But for the independence of the media, well, there's a question. And this balance always needs to be struck between freedom of the media, political independence, particularly when it comes to public media. Take the case of Poland. After the latest elections, the head of public, the public broadcaster was exchanged. He used to be the spokesperson of the governing party. But also here in Germany, our constitutional court has ruled that our political parties should reduce their influence over public broadcasting in Germany. So this is a constant negotiation. How much influence do we allow for politics in the media? Outside of the European Union, of course, it is even more difficult. And tomorrow you will have the opportunity to be present in an event hosted by the European Endowment for Democracy, on the board of which I have the honor to serve, that talks about innovative media activities in Egypt, Syria, and Morocco. Very different societies, countries in very different stages of development, but all countries in which journalists face great challenges. And I'm grateful, I'm grateful to our media partners in these countries that they try to create open spaces for people to feel their views reflected in the public sphere. Lastly, ladies and gentlemen, and I will be very brief about this topic because Peter Limburg has spoken about it and Michael Roth as well. There is a growing distrust in the general public concerning the serious, the established, the traditional media. For journalists, this is more painful than for politicians, but journalists and politicians are lumped together now. We are all one elite not giving you truthful accounts of what is going on, not fighting about different ways to, to, to govern our countries, but it's one elite that is a big conspiracy, the Lügenpresse, the lying media. Populist parties, including in this country, in Germany, are increasingly successful in exploiting this and to discredit the serious media that focus on research and serious reporting. The question is, how can the media re-establish contact with those parts of the public that it has lost? It's a question to which I have no answer. But I think, when we draw a bottom line, in different roles, let me be very clear, in different roles, journalists on the one end and politicians on the other, we must find ways to promote media freedom, to reconstruct trust, in the media and in politics to spread democratic values. And let me tell you in conclusion, we are all here in Bonn. Bonn is part of the Rhineland. It's jokingly referred to as the only Mediterranean region of Germany <laughs> because people tend to be very optimistic here. And so let me end on an optimistic note. I don't want to accept the death of the liberal secular consensus. I think we all together should work to find ways to strengthen our own consensus, this liberal, secular, democratic consensus. Let us work for the dignity of each and every human being. Let us work for the liberty of our peoples and societies. And let us dedicate to respect and understanding for the diversity of our cultures and nations. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Mr. Graf Lambsdorff. The changing media landscape is also a challenge for politicians. So please welcome the Minister of Federal Affairs, Europe and the Media in North Rhine-Westphalia, Franz Josef Lerschmense. Dear Mr. Limburg, Minister of State Roth, Vice President Graf Lambsdorff, Mr. Ergin, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests from all across the world. I'm delighted that you have all made, the, at least for some of you, long trip here to Bonn to discuss media values and media freedom. Why do we need this discussion? A lot already has been said. Freedom of expression and freedom of the press are human rights and the cornerstones of any democratic society. We note with growing concern that in many parts of the world, these rights are not or are no longer sufficiently valued. Freedom of the press and of broadcasting is being curtailed by restrictive media laws, even in some European countries, as already has been mentioned. Moreover, media diversity is also declining in many countries, especially due to economic constraints. The current business model is being called into question by the process of digitalization and changed expectations of users, making it increasingly difficult to fund high quality journalism. In addition, the work of journalists is in many areas of the world becoming more and more difficult and frequently even life threatening. High quality journalism, careful research and independent reporting are thus facing manifold problems at a time when such work is more important than ever, as demonstrated, for example, by the dealing with the current refugee crisis in the media. On the whole, the media in Germany are doing an excellent job especially when dealing with this complex topic. And in view of the smear and defamation campaigns on the internet, it is absolutely necessary that the media counteract rumors and fears with objective and balanced reporting. Public service broadcasters and daily newspapers rightly enjoy a high degree of credibility with a large section of the population. It is alarming and not acceptable that they are in Germany abusively referred to as Lügenpresse or lying press. Journalists are even under threat also in Europe and Germany. Not just the media, but all of us are called upon to confront these threats while at the same time facing up to the fears and problems which rebel rousers attempt to use to their advantage. At the media forum last week in Cologne, the Prime Minister Anne-Laure Kraft addressed this subject and suggested the, the development of a code of rules for the internet to be coordinated in dialogue with you, media workers, but also with churches, journalists, associations, trade unions, and other civil society participants. Ladies and gentlemen, I also would like to use the opportunity to congratulate Sedat Ergin on behalf of the government of North Rhine-Westphalia for being awarded the Freedom of Speech Award of DW. I think this is a strong signal for freedom of press in Turkey and that freedom of press can never be a matter of negotiation or compromise. Applause 
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very glad that Deutsche Welle, with an interesting program, is devoting three days to the issues of media freedom and values. Deutsche Welle stands for free and independent reporting worldwide. And Mr. Limburg, with your new offer for refugees, you and your staff are making an important contribution to the integration of the people coming to us, fleeing from war and persecution. Freedom of speech and freedom of the press are fundamental rights which we must defend. It is important to discuss this, these freedoms and to fight for them. I hope that during the next few days you will have interesting discussions, exciting encounters and impulses for your day-to-day -day work. And last but not least, have a nice time in the beautiful, the federal city of Bonn. Thank you very much.